decompose consumption into its autonomous and induced components. We've also looked at investment and we've taken that as autonomous, independent of the level of income. And we're going to assume that net exports for now too are autonomous. So I'll take a look at consumption, but before we do that, we have to look at the effect government has. That by introducing government, what effect does that have on consumption expenditure? So government can affect the economy in three ways here. There's government expenditure in the economy. There's also the effect of taxes. We're going to call that TA and transfer payments, TR. So for example, uh, benefits that may give to the poor, for instance, the government. So how does that affect this aggregate demand? Will taxes and transfer payments affect consumption expenditure? We now have to consider income, but the difference here is we look at disposable income in the presence of government. So you may earn a certain income, but you have to subtract the taxes that you'll pay. We're going to just assume that they, for now they're also autonomous of the level of income. Um, we will relax that assumption in the next step. Plus, we'll add any transfer payments that we may receive, any benefits we may receive from government. So we've now seen how income changes within the presence of government, disposable income. So we can just substitute in for our aggregate demand. We know that consumption is equal to autonomous consumption. Spending plus little CY, although now we need to consider disposable income as opposed to normal income. And then we add our other terms, investment, government spending, and net exports. So all we're going to do is substitute in, it's the only thing that's different, is substitute in for disposable income. It's normal income minus the taxes that you have to pay, plus the transfer payments you may receive from government, plus your other terms. And then collecting terms, and we take out little c here, we take out little c, and we get... This is going to be minus transfer payments plus our other terms and at the end here we'll get plus little cy and we can put brackets around all of this because this all this in brackets represents autonomous spending for your economy and we can call that like we did previously a bar autonomous spending that does not depend on income in your economy and your induced component little c y that part of aggregate demand that does depend on income and we know that in this is an expression for your aggregate demand that we know that in equilibrium aggregate demand is equal to income so we can put the two equal to each other we can put income equal to Total autonomous spending plus little c y. And we're going to get y minus c y, taking that across is equal to a, or you're going to get y into 1 minus c is equal to autonomous spending. And that gives us the multiplier. You can see that income in equilibrium is going to be equal to autonomous spending times by 1 over 1 minus c, if you use your maths. And that is a very important expression. That is the very simple Keynesian multiplier. And it shows you that if you want to increase income in your economy, there are two ways to do it. Either by raising autonomous spending, through any of these components, through um, raising transfer payments, raising autonomous expenditure, investment, government expenditure, etc., or, or net exports, um, or lowering your autonomous taxes. And the other thing that is going to change your multiplier is the effect of little c, the marginal propensity to consume. The higher that is, the greater will be your level of income. Why? Because remember over here, you're subtracting little c, the higher that is, um, the smaller the number you're going to get on the bottom, and you're dividing by it, so the larger will be your final outcome, or your income or output.